how do I pick the right architecture? And so if you think about the architecture completely, if this is a completely new project that you're thinking about rolling out and you're thinking about the architecture, you'll wanna ask yourself some things as you go along. So first think about those physical connections. Are the connections unreliable? Is there geographic separation? Do you need resilience if part of that system goes down? If you said yes to any of these, choose hub and spoke. This is the hub and spoke architecture. Every one of those different lines here has the potential of having problems going down, coming back up. And the whole idea behind hub and spoke is that it provides resiliency for those connections if there is a communication loss. It will do store and forward, hold on to information, send that information through uh, when that connection comes back up and you won't experience data loss just because of an unreliable connection or low bandwidth connection. Next question, do I need to run on the cloud? Well, <laughs> choose a cloud architecture. Uh, this is a quick example of what a cloud architecture can look like, where you have the ignition server in the cloud along with the database and then different clients, uh, designers are connected up to that. And there's some connection down to sensors in some way or different locations. The connections there we'll loop back and talk a little bit more about uh, here in a few more slides. How do I pick the right architecture? The next question here, have, do you have a small system and a reliable network? And can you run everything from a central office or a server room? Now, this is our standard architecture, as we call it. Uh, sometimes I also call it our basic architecture. Uh, and this would be uh, the simplest type of architecture that you can have. Basically, if you have reliable connections, if you don't need to worry about data loss, if the connection goes down, if you're not worried about someone taking a forklift through a network cable, um, or if that happens, if you have bigger problems and you know it's not going to be a big deal if some of the connections go down or some of the screens go down at that time, uh, then having a single server, uh, and if you have a small enough system, having a single server uh, can make a lot of sense. And we'll talk about some of the sizes uh, when I say smaller system that I'm talking about. Smaller systems can still be fairly large uh, with tens or hundreds of thousands of tags um, going up to uh, uh, potentially 100 or 200 clients at the same time. Uh, but we'll get into some of those numbers here shortly. And what if you have a system that's bigger than a small system? What if you have a system that you need to do the same thing, but it's large? That's where the scale out architecture comes into play. The scale out architecture has to do with tags and IO gateways connection, connecting to devices, uh, having those individual pathways there that will split the load for device communication. Um, sometimes that's connected directly to devices. Sometimes that's connected through MQTT. Sometimes that's connected through other protocols or OPC. Whatever that connection happens to look like, these tags and IO gateways split out the load for the tag processing, for the historian, for the alarm processing, uh, separating that from the front end gateways. And if you have more than a few hundred clients, you can have multiple front end gateways as well. So there's the ability to run behind a load balancer and those front end gateways can split the load across all of the different clients. Maybe you need to do a variety of these functions. Can you mix and match architectures? Well, yes, absolutely. So this is an example of the scale out architecture in the upper right inside a site that you already have. Maybe you wanna add on cloud to this so that there's cloud visualization, there are cloud reports, um, maybe it's a small number of folks who access the system through the cloud, or maybe it's a really large number. Uh, you can absolutely mix and match and extend your architectures here. Or if you need a scale out architecture and you also need that data resiliency and you need to be able to connect to different devices in more of a hub and spoke type of manner, you can absolutely do that. Uh, so these architectures are intended to be examples. Uh, not an exhaustive list of exactly what you need to do. And in fact, I work with companies every day where we talk about what it looks like for enterprise rollouts, for scaling up smaller architectures, uh, where they may be starting from a standard architecture that we just showed with a single ignition gateway, and then they're moving to something bigger. And so it's very common that folks have many pieces of all of these different architectures, but these are a nice way to think of your final architecture, the different features that you need, and why you might need those features. 
And the last question here, what about IIoT Industry 4.0 and data collection architectures enabling digital transformation? Well, these layer into all of the architectures that we've mentioned here. So MQTT is often used for these types of applications. And in fact, more applications than that as well. So MQTT is used for resilient data collection, single source of truth, company adoption of open standards, low bandwidth connections, modern industrial and IT protocol support. Uh, and if there are initiatives for Industry 4.0, IIoT and digital transformation, it fits right into that as well. Uh, I should mention this webinar is focused on the ignition gateways themselves uh, inside those architectures. And every one of the architecture diagrams that you see along the way can utilize MQTT for data collection and data transfer. So you'll see a lot of lines inside these diagrams that just show connections to devices, connections to PLCs, connections to other systems. Uh, those connections, a good portion of those connections can be MQTT connections um, or can be some other protocols there as well. And if you're not familiar with MQTT or IIoT in general, I would encourage you to go to our website, check out our solutions page on IIoT. Uh, we do have webinars on digital transformation, on data apps using MQTT, and a variety of other things. Um, so the rest of this webinar won't focus on this, but this is certainly an important part of many architectures and architecture decisions going forward. And if you're thinking about scaling out or you're thinking about going to more modern architectures, I'd certainly encourage you to have MQTT as part of that discussion.